God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. How good is the God of Israel to the pure of heart. How good God is to Israel, to those who are pure of heart. Yet my feet came close to stumbling. My steps had almost slipped. For I was filled with envy of the proud when I saw how the wicked prosper. For them there are no pains. Their bodies are sound and sleek. They have no share in men's sorrows. They are not stricken like others. So they wear their pride like a necklace. They clothe themselves with violence. Their hearts overflow with malice. Their minds seethe with plots. They scoff. They speak with malice. From on high they plan oppression. They have set their mouths in the heavens, and their tongues dictate to the earth. So the people turn to follow them and drink in all their words. They say, How can God know? Does the Most High take any notice? Look at them, such are the wicked, but untroubled they grow in wealth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. How good is, is the, the God, God of, of Israel, Israel to, to the, the pure of heart. Their laughter will turn to weeping, their merriment to grief. How useless to keep my heart pure and wash my hands in innocence when I was stricken all day long, suffered punishment day after day. Then I said, if I should speak like that, I should abandon the faith of your people. I strove to fathom this problem, too hard for my mind to understand, until I pierced the mysteries of God and understood what becomes of the wicked. How slippery the paths on which you set them. You make them slide to destruction. How suddenly they come to their ruin, wiped out, destroyed by terrors, like a dream one wakes from, O Lord. When you wake, you dismiss them as phantoms. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Their laughter will turn to weeping, weeping their, their merriment, merriment to grief. grief. Those who depart from you will perish. My joy is to remain with you, my God. And so, when my heart grew embittered, and when I was cut to the quick, I was stupid and did not understand no better than a beast in your sight. Yet I was always in your presence. You were holding me by my right hand. You will guide me by your counsel, and so you will lead me to glory. What else have I in heaven but you? Apart from you I want nothing on earth. My body and my heart faint for joy. God is my possession forever. All those who abandon you shall perish. You will destroy all those who are faithless. To be near God is my happiness. I have made the Lord God my refuge. I will tell of all your works at the gates of the city of Zion. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Those who depart from, from you, you will perish. perish. My, my joy is, is to remain with you, you my God. God. To savor your words is my delight, O Lord. Honey itself is not sweeter. From the book of Job. Once again, the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with them. And the Lord said to Satan, Whence do you come? And Satan answered the Lord and said, from roaming the earth and patrolling it. And the Lord said to Satan, Have you noticed my servant Job, and that there is no one on earth like him, faultless and upright, fearing God and avoiding evil? He still holds fast to his innocence, although you incited me against him to ruin him without cause. And Satan answered the Lord and said, 
skin for skin, all that a man has will he give for his life. But now put forth your hand and touch his bone and his flesh, and surely he will blaspheme you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, He is in your power, only spare his life. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with severe boils from the soles of his feet to the crown of his head. And he took a potsherd to scrape himself as he sat among the ashes. Then his wife said to him, Are you still holding to your innocence? Curse God and die. But he said to her, are even you going to speak as senseless women do? We accept good things from God, and should we not accept evil? Through all this, Job said nothing sinful. Now when three of Job's friends heard of all the misfortune that had come upon him, they set out each one from his own place, Eliphaz from Teman, Bildad from Shu, and Zophar from Namath. They met and journeyed together to give him sympathy and comfort. But when, at a distance, they lifted up their eyes and did not recognize him, they began to weep aloud. They tore their cloaks and threw dust upon their heads. Then they sat down upon the ground with him seven days, and seven nights, but none of them spoke a word to him, for they saw how great was his suffering. O oh God, do not chastise me in your anger, for your arrows have pierced me through. My body is sick because of your indignation. My friends and neighbors avoid me in my sickness. My body is sick because of your indignation. From the Moral Reflections on Job by St. Gregory the Great, Pope. When Paul perceived within himself the riches of internal wisdom, yet saw the corruptibility of his own body, he was led to say, We have this treasure in earthen vessels. Now in the blessed Job, the earthen vessel felt the gaping sores without, while this treasure of wisdom remained whole and intact within. For outwardly his body was in agony, but inwardly from the treasure of wisdom came forth holy thoughts. If we have received good from the hand of the Lord, why should we not endure evil? The good here refers either to the temporal or to the eternal gifts of God, and the evil to the scourges of the present time, about which the Lord says through the prophet, I am the Lord and there is no other. I form the light and create the darkness. I make peace and create evil. I form the light and create the darkness. For though outwardly these scourges create the darkness of anguish, inwardly knowledge enkindles the light in the mind. I make peace and create evil. For peace with God is restored to us when those things which were rightly created for us but are not ordinarily desired are turned into scourges and become evil for us. It is through sin that we become opposed to God Therefore, it is fitting that we should return to his peace by way of scourges. In this manner, when everything created for good is turned into a source of pain for us, the mind of the chastened man may be humbly renewed and restored to peace with his creator. We ought particularly to observe in Job's words how skillfully he meets his wife's persuading. If we have received good from the hand of the Lord, why should we not endure evil? It is a great comfort in tribulation if, in times of adversity, we recall the gifts our Creator has given us. Nor will overwhelming sorrow break us if we quickly call to mind the gifts which have sustained us. For it is written, On the day of prosperity do not forget affliction, and on the day of affliction do not forget prosperity. For if a man receives God's gifts but forgets his affliction, he can fall through his own excessive joy. If, on the other hand, when a man is bruised by scourges, 
but is not at all consoled by the thought of the blessings he has been fortunate to receive, he is completely cast down. Thus, both attitudes must be united so that one may be supported by the other. The memory of the gift can temper the pain of the affliction, and the foreboding and fear of the affliction can modify the joy of the gift. And so the holy Job, to soothe his soul's depression in the midst of his wound, weighs the delightful gifts he has received even while he suffers from the scourges, saying, If we have received good from the hand of the Lord, why should we not endure evil? If we receive happiness from God, should we not accept sorrow also? The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. May his will be done. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all his sufferings, Job did not sin, nor did he speak insultingly of God. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. May his will be done. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, guide the course of world events and give your church the joy and peace of serving you in freedom. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Give him thanks.